everybody, this is Keith here of Euphoria Pictures. Welcome back to my channel. So yes, I picked up a couple of Arrow releases in the last week or two. Uh, me and my fiance are going through this kind of a spell, which uh, we're trying to get as many 80s slasher movies as we can get uh, from Arrow in particular. And uh, thankfully, a lot of these titles were actually going quite cheap. So it was a little bit of a gamble, but I have to admit, some of them have paid off, some of them are quite poor, but there's still elements of enjoyment that we get from them, no matter how poor they actually are. So uh, yes, we had a fun time with these. So uh, let's not waste any time, let's get right into it, and I'm going to revisit a film that I promised I said I'd go back to. So I've got up first Henry, a uh, portrait of a serial killer. Now, I'm not going to do any unboxing of this. I've already done it already. Uh, I will leave the link in the description below if you do want to check it out. It is a beautiful set from Arrow. And as you can see, this is my replacement copy. Um, the first one I showed was actually damaged. And I have to give credit to Amazon. They snapped on it fairly quickly. And within two days, I had my replacement copy. So when I showed this off, I didn't get to see, it, uh, see the movie. Uh, I hadn't seen it in years, and I was very curious to see what I was going to think of the movie. And I have to admit now, after watching it again, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of the movie. Uh, I really am not, gonna, I'm not a fan of it. Now, I'm not going to sit here and bash this movie because I'm not a fan of its genre. So I don't think it's fair that I do so. It's just I'm just going to say that the film is definitely not for me. Now, the one thing I will praise about it is Michael Rooker's performance in it. Uh, you can definitely definitely see he was going places uh, with his performance in this. And that is the one kind of uh, saving grace uh, when watching this film. I thought he was fantastic in it. Now, like I said, I'm not going to bash the movie, but I will... What I have no problem bashing is the 4K transfer in this movie. Um, I said it to a few people now, I've said it in the comment section as well. Uh, I think this film is absolute rubbish in 4K. Uh, now, I know people are going to be out there saying, oh, wait a minute, it was shot in 16mm, it was never a good looking movie. And that's the point that I'm trying to make here. Why is this film being brought out in 4K? It has no business being in, being on, it being in 4K. Uh, Everything they accomplished with this disc could have easily been accomplished with a Blu-ray disc. No question about it. Uh, and that's why there is no Blu-ray disc with this, with this set. Because they didn't want you to check. Because they, they knew well that there'd be little to no difference with the 4K release and the Blu-ray. And having said that, even if it was on Blu-ray, it would be a very poor looking Blu-ray. It'd probably be one of the worst looking Blu-rays as well. Uh, this film, I have nothing good to say about the 4K transfer on this. Uh, the film is grainy. It is extraordinarily grainy. Uh, the picture is incredibly soft. The colours are lifeless. Uh, hated it. Everything, everything that I love about 4K is just not in this in this set, unfortunately. So I just wanted to come back to it uh, again. I just I can't. If you have a Blu-ray of this movie. I honestly cannot recommend you picking up the 4K release of this. You are getting nothing, uh, which is a bit of a shame uh, when you see the effort that's gone into the set itself. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, this was a bit of a letdown. But the features on it actually have been great. I've been enjoying watching them. And uh, that's the one, another saving grace with this release as well. So uh, yeah, that is Henry, uh, Portrait of a Serial Killer. Right, now onto my couple of my standard releases. And uh, the first one I picked up was this one here. Uh, it is called The Slayer. Uh, now, I have to say, the one thing about this film is this cover is the most misleading cover you will ever see to a movie. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about it, but when you do see the movie, you'll know exactly what I mean. Uh, this one is, I have to admit, I actually enjoyed the setting of this movie. Uh, it's a more adult-themed kind of uh, slasher movie. Uh, these four people go on a holiday to go to this kind of island uh, where the four are being kind of stalked and prayed by someone or something. And uh, yeah, it's your just run-of-the-mill uh, 80s slasher movie. But I have to admit, uh, the way the film was executed in this, the, the director had done a very good job with it. Uh, again, going back to the location uh, of this movie, it just looks absolutely fantastic. And uh, when we watched this, uh, my fiancé checked it up, and to my absolute amazement, uh, she said to me that this was, seen, this was actually uh, classed as a video nasty back in the day. Um, absolutely baffling when you actually do watch this movie. There is not that many bad scenes in it. So I'm not quite sure why that was in the video nasty section. Uh, again, you would have seen a hell of a lot worse back in the 80s. So a um, bit of a bit of an odd one, this one. But um, 
the film itself yeah i've actually quite enjoyed it I'm looking forward to actually watching it again and uh, the picture quality is very decent the print in this looks amazing and uh, the audio is very decent as well so uh, yeah that is the slayer and very happy with that one right up next we have a decent little film here called uh, edge of the axe uh, again, another another run-of-the-mill slasher movie from the 80s where uh, a serial killer is wreaking havoc in this small town in America. And that's the one thing about me when it comes to horror movies. I love the whole small town setting. And uh, they've, done very, they've done a great job with this release, uh, with this movie, sorry. Uh, it does, it just kind of ticks all the boxes for me when it comes to like a whole small town setting. Um, I've said this to a few people about this movie now. Um, some, of the, some of the practical effects in this movie is quite impressive uh you know it's called edge of the axe so naturally uh, the killer is using an axe during this movie and i have to admit when you see people being killed in this movie you can clearly see that they are getting the shit whacked out of them with this axe uh, whatever prop they were using for it it actually looked incredible and i presume they must have had blood packs on them so when he kind of hits them it just kind of yeah it's spurts out you know and uh, i have to admit it's some of the best practical axe work effects that I've seen on a slasher movie, very, very impressed by it. Uh, but there is one scene in this movie, and again, I've said this to a few people, and again, I don't know what to think of it. But there is, I think it's the second murder in this movie. It's a woman being, again, stalked by this killer. And there's a bit where she turns around, and she can, you can, she, 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 she looks directly at him, basically. Now, I don't know what was going on, if the lighting department wasn't doing that job in this movie, or the director wasn't very good, or maybe he wasn't anticipating Blu-rays. But uh, when Yohan looked at him, you can clearly see his face. It's, you know, there's, there's no denying it. You can get a good look at who he is. Now, this film is meant to be a who's doing it kind of movie. And like I said, you do see it, you can see his face. And then when I seen that scene, I was kind of going, all right, maybe it's not a kind of who's doing a kind of movie now that we know who the killer is. And then all of a sudden the film just carried on and it was carrying on like it was a, a who's doing a, <laughs> a movie. And then all of a sudden the ending came and then the big reveal came to who the killer was. And it just wasn't the person that they showed at the start of this movie. Uh, the person they showed wasn't even in the movie. So I honestly do not know what is going on and again if you have seen this movie again leave a comment down below and let me know your th thoughts on that scene. I, I found it to be very very strange and uh, I have to admit we were actually laughing at the end of it. Uh, I never seen anything like that before in my life uh, but it is a decent little fun movie and uh, yeah that is Edge of the Axe. Uh, right, up next, uh, this is the same director as that Edge of the Axe. I think this might have been, might have been his last movie. Uh, so we've got Deadly Manor. Now, the one thing about this movie, I will say, if this was his last movie, he definitely ended in a whimper because uh, the acting was a hell of a lot worse in this, this film than The Edge of the Axe. And uh, the practical effects were absolutely non-existent in this movie as well, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, the film is about these people that are going on a camping trip and uh, just decide to stop at this manor uh, before getting to the campsite that they're meant to be getting to. And, uh, of course, they're all being picked off one by one in this manner. Now, the one thing I will say about this film is uh, that whoever done the location scouting on this film uh, done a remarkable job. You should see the house, the manor itself. It looks absolutely extraordinary. Uh, a great setting to the movie. The only thing that let it down was when you go inside the house. Uh, it's almost like they're limited to three rooms uh, when they go inside. It's either one bedroom a living room or a basement and that's it and it was a real real letdown uh, when you especially when you see the house outside you thought that the uh, interiors were going to be just as exciting as the house itself unfortunately it wasn't the case uh, this film again another strange thing and again going back to this director i don't know if it was a a choice of his or not but um when you watch slasher movies in the 80s, the film, the, the, these films normally after 20 minutes, you get an idea who the main protagonist in this movie is. It's always a woman. And not in this movie. Uh, this film was on 50 minutes and I remember stopping it and my fiance turned around and said to me, who is the protagonist, the main protagonist in this movie? We had no idea. And then when it came down to the last person, we could not believe it. We were like, we were cobsmacked because um, the, the actor had only a couple of lines in the movie. 
you just never would have thought it was going to be this person that got down to the last. And uh, yeah, it was a very, very strange choice. Again, I don't know if this was the director's intention or again, he's just not a very good director. I honestly don't know. Um, the film was okay. Uh, it's not the best thing I've ever seen and it was definitely not near as good as Edge of the Axe, but still had a good fun time watching it. So uh, yeah, that is uh, Deadly Banner. Right, up next we have this absolutely batshit crazy movie, uh, Blood Rage. Now, I was told by this release that if you get this slipcover, the slipcover is apparently very rare. Uh, I don't know if they're limited to a certain number. Uh, again, if they are, I don't know what it is because it doesn't say it on this. But apparently, I was told that if you do have the slipcover, you're doing quite well. So, uh, yeah, great to actually have it. And it really is a nice slipcover. Uh, the movie itself, it's um, it really is crazy. Uh, it starts off with two twin brothers. Uh, they're at a drive drive through cin drive through cinema, and uh, one of the brothers kills this just randomly kills this fella in a car, and then he blames the other brother for the murder. So the other brother is then sent to this mental asylum, and then the movie kind of jumps ten years. I think it's ten years, and uh, the brother breaks out of this asylum, and he comes back home. And the brother that, uh, who originally done the killing just starts randomly killing everyone for some strange reason. And that's the whole movie. That's it. It's, that's it in a nutshell. It's a real kind of comedy horror. Uh, it is so unbelievably stupid. But you know what? It was one of them films that when we finished watching it, we still had a smile on our face. You know, it was, um, it was a fun, fun slasher movie, even though again very poorly executed and uh, some of the practical effects weren't all that great in it but um no you know what again it was one of those things that we just yeah like i said we came back with a smile on our face so that is it folks that is everything that i picked up from arrow video and uh, i think you're going to be seeing a lot more of these videos because we're going to continue this uh, we've had enjoyed a lot of these movies and uh, we did get a lot of them for quite cheap and uh, yeah we're going to continue it on and see what else we can pick up so uh, that is it so as per usual if you did like this video please do give it a thumbs up and if you could do leave a comment down below and please do share your thoughts on some of these movies if you have seen them and uh, yeah and i hope to see you all again real soon with my next video so take it easy folks and i'll see you soon bye bye